Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to do just about everything from the ground up. In today's episode, we are going to be doing some vacuum bending. So I'm going to walk you through the process of using this vacuum bag how to build a jig and doing the glue up for a vacuum bend. When you're doing very large, long bends like this, it's not necessarily convenient to use the jig method or the two part bending method with yellow glue because it's such a long surface. So trying to build a jig that would actually satisfy the needs of this and getting the right adequate pressure is a little bit complicated. And a very easy way of doing that is to use a vacuum bag. Vacuum bags can be really expensive if they are for woodworking purposes. They're usually made out of vinyl. They run about $200 a piece and they are fairly large. But in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to do it the cheap way using nothing but these space saver bags that you can buy. Various brands make them, all kinds of different ones, even at the 99 cent store. They work really great for this process. You just want to pay attention to the size of your bag based off of the size of the mold that you're going to be making. So let's go get started. I'm going to walk you through this process. First thing I did was to cut down my piece of this quick tube down to the size that I needed. Now you could use various different things for your curve. I debated actually cutting up five gallon bucket and ended up just going with this because I was able to find one in my size. The main reason why I didn't want to go with the bucket is it has a slight taper. I've done this with PVC pipes before. PVC pipe works out really great, but unfortunately I needed a very large piece and I wasn't going to be able to get a PVC pipe in the size that I needed. I went with this cardboard. It's basically a cardboard tube that they usually pour concrete in. In this case, we're going to be using it to create a jig for this bent lamination. Once you have your tube cut down to size, I now need to cut it down vertically down the other way. It's not exactly going to be cut in half. It's going to be cut just slightly in half because I need to have it a little bit longer, but I need to have a flat place to put this on. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my straight line. So the next thing I did was to cut up a piece of MDF that was going to serve as my bottom base. After I cut it down to the size that I needed, I went in and added a notched groove on my table saw. And this is going to allow for my cardboard form to have somewhere to sit so I can just kind of pop that in there and pop the other end in. My ends are a little bit jagged because I used the scissors to cut, but a little bit of sanding and coaxing will help get that into where it's gotta go. Come on now. But the next step is going to be to get rid of any of the sharp edges because you don't want anything that's going to possibly puncture the vacuum bag when it goes inside of it. This is the reason why we're using MDF because anything like a plywood may have a chance of splintering off and any bits of those splinters could cut into the bag. So I'm going to be really diligent about making sure I knock off all my edges all around and sand up this cardboard nice and well. And then I'd be ready to go adding on some wooden blocks. What I'm using my piece for, the side of a model house that is a Victorian turret, there's gonna be windows inside the turret. So I need to make sure that I put in these blocks. So it'll be much easier to have a small void already ready to go. And then I can just clean up the inside rather than trying to cut through the wooden bend. So the next step for me now is to deal with all my sanding and then I will be attaching these guys on here after I've wrapped them in packing tape and I probably am going to wrap the entire piece of this cardboard as well in packing tape just as a precaution to make sure because this is, you know, a porous material and I don't want the glue or anything getting stuck to my veneer when I do the glue up.
So I'm going to pre-drill these holes. All I have are these brass bolts. I use them for a lot of other things when I was making some lamps. So I'm just going to go with what I have. I need to pre-drill a hole big enough for the bolts to run through this plywood as well as the cardboard. All right. My jig is ready to go here, and I'm gonna move on to prepping the veneer. The first thing I need to do is get them a little bit more pared down so that they fit neatly on this jig. So I'm gonna get rid of my rough edges. All right, so I'm just gonna give myself a straight edge, and then take a pair of scissors and cut. So my jig is 11 and a half inches wide. I gave myself a lot of extra room on that, you know, so I don't have to worry about having too much of an overage, but so I'm gonna just cut these to sit flush with that 11 and a half. Now, veneer can be pretty brittle at times, depending on, you know, the type. And this has been sitting around for a while, so it's fairly dry. You could go ahead and put some blue tape on the top surface of this. The majority of it will come off. However, if there's any bleed through in your glue, you'll be dealing with, you know, blue tape that you may have to sand off. So I generally try to keep, if I have any major tears and rip, I try to repair them with some blue tape and make sure that that piece ends up in the middle of my layers somewhere buried where I won't actually see the blue tape. So that has worked for me in the past. I do need the full length. Okay, so we're not gonna touch that length. Uh, all right, I'm gonna prep all of mine to this stage and then I have to go in and begin cutting out the squares where the windows are gonna go. Okay, so I found my center point here, and now I'm going to measure the square for the middle that I'll be cutting out, which for me is four by four. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one out first, lay it over, and then do my markings for the second one. I know what my distance is here when, when I measured it. However, I'm going to have that arc. So I don't want to mess this up as far as, you know, cutting a little too less and then it doesn't quite fit right. So just using my box cutter. I don't want these cracks to get any worse. So I'm going to put some tape on them. going to undercut for those two side ones just to make sure that everything is working properly before I go and plow through everything. And that's what you got to be careful of, following the grain might want to take these, open these up just a bit. That's okay. 
I'm gonna have to take a little bit off of the inside of these. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure out and cut the other four. It should not be nearly as difficult as this was because this was just basically me trying to sort it all out, but I will now use this top one as a template. And then this is gonna end up getting stuck somewhere in the middle because there's far too many breakages here. But that's okay, we'll just hide all of the blue tape within the inside of the bend and you won't actually see it. All right, it is time to get this glue up going. First a bit about the bags. I picked up these bags either at Target or Walmart. This brand I'm not familiar with, but they were on clearance. And anytime I see these Space Saver bags, I grab them for this reason. These Ziploc ones run about 15 to $20, depending on the size and how many you get. Now, these quality of these bags are not nearly as great as the quality of a bag that you would get if you were to purchase a legit vacuum bag. However, the legit vacuum bag is around 200 bucks-ish in that range. They are made out of vinyl and will last longer, but if you're only messing around with doing a little bit of bending here and there and it is not like part of your business, these more than fit the bill. I don't know, I, I've not needed any more than what these are and I've been able to do, you know, several glue ups with one bag before I've had to like need to patch it or anything. I probably got somewhere between five to eight glue ups before it needed to have, you know, a duct tape patch or whatever. And those are on bags that I found at Harbor Freight that were about a dollar a bag. Okay, so that's the bag. And because this is going to be in a vacuum bag, I will need to use my epoxy. So I'll be using this West System epoxy. It comes with these pumps that you get and you, you pop the pumps on and each pump is the exact amount of, you know, the resin and hardener that you need for the glue up. This stuff is pretty gnarly though, so you wanna make sure you're wearing gloves when you're doing it. If you're not in a very well ventilated area, move to a very well ventilated area and certainly wear a respirator if need be. This stuff is super expensive, so I only generally use it when I need to do a glue up where I can't have an air cure. Usually I'm using my regular Tight Bond, but Tight Bond needs air to actually dry. This stuff will be a chemical reaction, so it'll be fine within the bag. In addition to the jig that we just made, I also will be using some disposable plastic cup. You just need one, should be plastic. I know plastic sucks, but if you use any paper or anything like that, the resin will totally eat into it and you will end up with resin all over your hands and a halfway eaten cup of, that you're mixing in. And then I have some wooden stick and a paint roller. I've used this roller several times for painting and now it's kind of exhausted. So this will be its last run because once it gets gooped up with epoxy, I'm gonna have to throw it out. And then I have the pieces all laid out. The best looking ones with the least amount of splits are gonna be my top and my bottom. I'm going to be sticking that one that had a bunch of cuts all messed up in the middle and I will leave this tape on to kind of keep those in place but once it's glued up you won't see it. I have my shop vac over here ready to go and I also need some blue tape. I will be using this blue tape to secure these pieces temporarily to the form before I get it in the bag that way it doesn't go sliding around on me. These blocks should help somewhat. I'm gonna prep the glue and get this all going. Okay, so it's equal pumps of each and I'm not quite sure how much I'm gonna need. I'm gonna start off with two of each. Not happy with that coverage. All right, so I'm gonna go two more pumps. It's important to let them come back up on their own, the pump heads, because every time they come back up, they're re-sucking up resin and the hardener. So if you don't let them do that, you might get uneven stuff. Your epoxy won't properly cure. Try and keep this in one spot so I'm just gonna be stacking. I know that some of that I lost in the uh, roller absorbing the epoxy, so I should be okay with the rest of it. Maybe not.
here's the bit I need that tape for. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, I got some compression happening because of the cardboard. Let's see if I can readjust. I might have sucked a little too much air out. All right. I think it's all right. All right, so it's gonna sit in this vacuum bag for the cure time, which I believe with this stuff, six to eight hour cure time. All right, so what's gonna happen is over the course of the next several hours, I'm gonna have to keep checking on it and making sure that it has not lost any additional air. If it has done so, I will just, you know, re-suck out a little bit more of that air. It still does the job. You just have to keep an eye on it. So every, you know, half hour or so, I will make sure that it hasn't lost too much air. And usually when you're dealing with a big vacuum bag deal, it's a full table that's running on a compressor and a timer that is constantly re-sucking out that air. In this case, you have to do it manually because, you know, obviously this is the cheap way of doing this. All right, so once this sets, I will come back and show you the results. All right, it is the big reveal time. So let's see how this went, if this worked, or if I have total disaster. I ended up double bagging because I realized I was losing air somewhere and I wasn't sure if it was my, me not getting a tight seal or if I had a leak in that particular bag. It was a brand new bag, so I don't see why it would have had a leak, but these things happen, so I don't know. It could have been that I just didn't get a good seal because I was on a time crunch with getting this thing glued up before the epoxy set. I needed to just get a quick solution and that was just to throw a second bag over it. Ooh, smell that veneer. Smell that epoxy. Moment of truth. Alrighty. So I got a bit of cleanup to do. Looks like it's gonna be just fine because I'm actually gonna be shingling this guy just like I did the top of the roof here. So for my purposes, I'm okay with the way this turned out. I do have a little bit of bowing here when I did those cutouts. Um, it's gonna do the job for me. So there you have it, vacuum bag, bent lamination, I guess bent lamination, it is bent layers. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and hope to see you soon.